Hello and welcome to our podcast on open access resources. I'm Naomi from the skills team and once again I'm joined by Holly, the library's repository and open access librarian. That brings us nicely on to open access resources because if you haven't started your course yet if you're not registered at the university you might not be able, well you won't be able to access the resources that the library for example has purchased for students with licensing requirements so Holly tell open access and how open access can help well I mean the first question we've got there is what does it actually mean and if it's in its sort of truest essence open access is basically just free access to research literature online and in its really what it get, comes down to also is um, ensuring that that open access research literature is then used by other people to kind of develop that area of research um, that's and that comes with a kind of a license aspect which we won't go into on this podcast but um, I think it's an enormously important thing that people have access to research literature you know and I think a lot of people assume that because they're not associated with the university, they're not enrolled with the university, they can't access resources because we don't have access to subscriptions, to journals. And largely, you know, there is so much open access literature available online now that you don't yeah. actually need to be associated with the university. Um, and that is kind of the main goal of the open access movement is to ensure that the public are actually getting access to this research and the outputs from that research because you know, there's a huge amount of money being spent by the public, by the, the, just the general taxpayer. Um, and a lot of this stuff is now is being, still being kept behind a paywall. Mm. So if you're a student and you've got a particular interest in a topic, you know, you're going to be able to access quite a, um, a wealth of knowledge and literature online for free. And it's becoming more and more prominent now as well. So um, one of the best ways to kind of search for open access content, moving on to the next question, is really just, I mean, one of the best ways, and this is one of the ways that I usually search for it, is to use Google Scholar. I was going to ask about Google, because when you yeah. say things being widely available on the internet, one automatically thinks of Google or another search engine. But for me, I yeah. have to say, it's Google that comes to mind. But so t tell me about Google Scholar and how that differs from Google, Google. Um, Google Scholar, we still have to be very careful when we're using it because there are issues with, in terms of things to do with copyright and licensing. Um, you know, people tend to post copies of their articles online because they think that they retain copyright to those articles when in a lot of cases they don't. So they end up posting things online which could be a breach of these copyright rules and regulations but there are a lot of ways in which Google Scholar can be useful so for example Eudora which is the Dar University of Derby's research archive is indexed by Google Scholar so let's say I publish a research article and I deposit it into Eudora um, when I do a search for that article online or maybe I do a search for a theme which relates to the topic that I've written my article on, it will automatically come up as um, available as a PDF free to download on Google Scholar. And then you'll literally be able to click on the PDF link and it will download to your desktop. Mm. So, you know, and there's one really good way of finding open access literature as well, um, particularly stuff that's been deposited in repositories, and that's to use um a, a service an online service called core c-o-r-e which basically aggregates it's the largest online aggregation of research literature it's got something it's got millions of articles in there for free and anybody so when can you say that. aggregation do you mean it can search them yeah so it's basic basically like a big online database so you might put mm -hmm. in a term or a keyword or you might know the title of the article that you're looking for and it will search across every single platform um, in the world and pull that data through and if there's a free version online it will find it for you that's brilliant yeah and you know it's it's one of the tools actually they're going to be using to monitor compliance for ref so it's a really recognized reliable tool um, and i'd recommend anybody who's looking for research literature for free to use that tool 
so how do I get is it core you said it was called so I'm yeah. now going to go to google and put in core yeah. <laughs> oh and it comes up yeah core.ac.uk yes brilliant yeah it's a fantastic resource so our repository as you were saying is called Eudora and that holds research done by by staff and PhD students at the University of Derby is that right that's it that's correct yes yeah. we have now over 5,000 outputs in there um so quite a lot of information it's we have an open access policy which requires our staff and um, researchers and research students to deposit their outputs in Eudora. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great way, you know, to get a feel for what we're doing at Derby. Yeah. And predominantly what these repositories are, are, you know, a showcase for research. It, you know, REF, yes, REF is, has this requirement for open access, but really what we're trying to do is we're trying to showcase our research we want it to disseminate to a wide ranging audience of people in all different countries from all different backgrounds um and you know it's one of the key ways to do that at derby i think um to use eudora so for someone that's applying for a course here or maybe just started their course here it can be a really good way to see what's going on in the department that you're studying or in the area that you're studying or that you're wanting to study right yeah. at this moment so you can look and see what research is being done and that can yeah. be fascinating yeah it can be fascinating and you know if you're if you're and i always say you know if you're a person that has a particular interest in a particular area especially perhaps if you're um, somebody looking to do a PhD at Derby, you can look at the different departments um, and you can see what the types of research are being done in your own subject area. Um, and that, that could have a kind of a key outcome for whether you choose to study at Derby or not, you know. Mm. Um, so, yeah. But if you're an undergraduate student, it's a great way to find out more about you know the type of staff and what they're doing as well um the kind of, the kinds of things you might be taught while you're studying at derby as well so i think it has benefits for all different a range of students yeah absolutely so we were talking earlier about how the the best way or one of the best ways that you can develop your skills of reading for university is to practice and these open access resources these resources in eudora are a really good way of of getting on and doing that practice, finding things to practice on. Um, really, really valuable resources that we've got. Yes, they are. Um, and you know, I still use open access resources now because I've got particular interests that I'm interested in reading up on and I know I can just go online, I can look things up and it's like I'm gonna find something free um, that I can read and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah, I think that brings it to the end of our plan. Did you have any other things that you were you were you felt you needed to say, Holly? Um, just to say, if you did want to access Eudora, you can just Google it. It's usually the first hit on the list. You don't even so how is it spelt? U D O R A. And it's does it it stands for it's University of Derby Online Research Archive. Research Archive. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and you'd say just googling it is the best way to get to it yeah if you're not you know if you're a member of staff there's other ways you can get into it or if you're a student you can go through the id home pages and it's on there but i mean the quickest way is just to google it you don't need to log in you can search it by author or you can, we've got two main collections in there one's research publications so that's everything that's been submitted from our researchers, all sorts of things. We've got, um, you know, journal articles in there, book chapters, books, exhibitions from our arts and um, therapeutic arts team. So there's just such a different, uh, such a plethora of information in there. Mm. Um, so yeah, please do access it. Yeah, there's options to log in, but that you don't need to do that. You don't need to register, you don't need to log in. No, you don't need to do anything like that. You can access the information in there for free. Um, you know, there might be an occasion where there's a lock on the document because a lot of copy, there's copyright issues to consider. 
Um, but most of the stuff in there you should be able to download. That brings us to the end of the podcast. Thank you very much, Holly, for joining us for this podcast and goodbye.